So here we go, in this video we're going to be talking a lot about M1, M2, M2 Max and how it compares to other stuff that's on the horizon. Let's get into it. On this IK of Answers we have another big question from Ali Zain Nurani and we're going to keep it on screen throughout. Part 1. Do you think that Apple will add Face ID to the MacBook Pros this time around, or might we have to wait a few more years? I'd really love Face ID on my future laptop, as it would be a great addition to it. It seems more obvious than ever now that they have the notch on there too. So yes, I do think that Face ID is coming to the MacBook Pros pretty soon. I don't know exactly when. It's very difficult to know because Apple has already put the notch on there. We kind of expected it. I think it was in Big Sur that we had um, software clues that uh, Macs would be getting Face ID, but no sign of it yet. Perhaps they're just trying to get Apple, uh, Apple Silicon out the door and then they're going to concentrate on adding those kind of features a little bit further down the line, maybe when there's less performance stuff to talk about. And in terms of performance, what do you think that the performance gains of the M2 Max would be over the M1 Max in terms of CPU and GPU? So I think for this, we have to look back at what's happened in the past and the M1, uh, we're basically looking at the differences between the cores in the a14 and the A15 because that's the, going to be the same as the difference between M1 and the M2 and just likewise basically like the M1 Max to the M2 Max and the only differences that we might see here is differences in the numbers of cores too so that's where it becomes a little bit more interesting so in terms of the single core performance we've talked about this on a couple of recent videos and it looks like single core performance is going to be around about 10 percent faster from m1 to m2 that's about the uh, performance difference that we get from a14 to a15 as well which is where our performance differences are going to come. Uh, we also look like we're getting about 22% performance increase from uh, multi-core scores, which is surprising because the number of cores is staying the same. It looks like we'll actually be getting four performance and four efficiency cores in the M2, just like with the M1. But for the M2 Pros and the M2 Maxes, we may well be getting a performance boost in terms of more cores too. It looks like Apple might be looking to go to 12 cores in total, which I would hope would still be 10 performance cores with two efficiency cores. That would be a much bigger bump in performance, maybe up to about 35%, maybe 40% at an absolute push. So that is going to be a, a much, much bigger, much more noticeable change. That's also going to use more power, though. It just depends if we're going to be getting more efficiency gains along the, the same lines. In terms of GPUs, it already looks like we're going to be getting more GPU cores anyway. So it looks like we're going up to 10 cores with the M2 from 8 with the M1 that would probably then translate to 20 and 40 cores instead of 16 and 32 in the Pro and the Max M2s that would be quite substantial in terms of the difference um, we've seen pretty big uh, performance improvements uh, in the GPU cores themselves as well. So I don't want to put a number on this one, but I think it is going to be a reasonable difference as well. Now, your third point, also, how do you think the GPU cores will fare against the RTX 40 series and AMD 7000 series of GPUs? There's a lot of news going around that a AMD will be using their chiplet architecture similar to UltraFusion to make their GPUs. This is rumored to be giving an over 200% increase in performance in the 7900 XT, which is even uh, rumored to outperform the RTX 4090. Now, I don't know enough about the way that AMD is doing things versus what Apple is going to be doing. I don't think they're going to be beating those top level uh, top level cards in the M1, uh, M2 Max. M2 Ultra, possibly. Mac Pros, possibly, because we don't know what they're doing with Mac Pro at all at the moment. It could be that the Mac Pro is going to be absolutely beastly in terms of graphics. Um, but again, it will still come down to what the software producers and uh, Apple does in terms of optimizing the software that is going to be used to actually work with these um, cards. This, this is the difficulty, is that the chips that are going on in the mainstream obviously have a lot more software support behind them whereas apple's metal at the moment is still struggling in terms of support so although there might be the raw horsepower there 
Whether anyone can harness those horses is the bigger question. Part four, do you think that Apple might be able to match some of these performance gains? As we saw in the iPhone 13 Pros, there was a 40% increase in GPU performance due to them adding one more GPU core, a 20% increase. The M2 Max is rumored to have a 40 core GPU, which adds 20% more cores. Yeah, this is this is where the diff difference is going to be, but also in terms of how quiet will it work? Like, do you want to have something that's running massive fans under your desk all day long because it's got uh, AMD or NVIDIA cards in it? Or do you want something that would sit in a small box on your desktop and basically run almost silently all day long because it's using Apple's more efficient cores? Uh, I mean, it depends on how much of your time you're spending in the studio. Like, for example, I'm in this studio here. This is my... M1 Mac Mini at the back, I've never heard it, which means that I can record in front of it with it running, with it kind of recording my audio, with the uh, video going into an iPhone, and even when I'm editing and rendering stuff out, I could be recording another video and you would still never hear it. Um, that makes a difference, especially if you're in a recording studio or you're in a TV studio or a production where you're doing anything live streaming. You want to be able to eliminate that kind of background noise which Apple lets you do a lot easier than uh, NVIDIA and AMD cards. Do you think these performance games on the M2 Max would be close to linear? As we saw with the current MacBook Pros, the performance games between M2, uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max were quite linear in most cases. Yes, in terms of the GPU, it does look like that's the way. However, there is an upper limit on how many cores different programs can use. Some some programs will utilize everything. If you look at something like a Cinebench, it basically does different tiles on different cores, the same with Blender. Um, when you look at other programs, maybe they're not as graphically intense or as CPU bound, and they don't necessarily scale in the same way. Um, it also seems like Apple has not quite optimized for using multiple media and code engines just yet, which, uh, which would also give massive gains if that was the case. Number six, do you think they might improve on the media engine or neural engine to increase performance with video 3D and or any application with AI encoding and decoding needs? I think the big thing that the neural engine is going to be uh, useful for going forward is probably denoising. Um, it's going to be useful for things like ray tracing potentially. Um, that's the other stuff that's been mentioned for it, but I don't believe it's optimized for that just yet. Fingers crossed. Media engines, though, they're already there and they're already awesome, but we need to know how to use them all together. And part seven. Also, when do you think Apple will stop showing those vague graphs? It's almost like they're giving all the Mac haters, PC people mostly, a reason to hate on their products more. Is this something they could genuinely learn from competitors like Intel and AMD? They show clear numbers and which app they got those numbers from instead of relative performance. So they could. However, Apple is not putting out uh, these events for the press media. They're not putting them out for people to analyze. They're putting them out to give you an idea of where this performs in comparison to something else. Now, they are also telling you exactly what apps they're using to get those numbers from. Uh, it's just that most people are ignoring it. It told you that the uh, the performance for the M1 Ultra in terms of graphics was um, Final Cut Pro, but an unreleased version, which is now out. Um, so that was uh, very much clear about what they were using they also tell you exactly what hardware they're going up against um, it's just that people are ignoring it and like to think that they're vague but also i think that apple doesn't lose out from this i don't think apple cares about the haters because if in all honesty the fact that people are out there commenting on this stuff and saying how awful these graphs are they're still talking about this device that they probably wouldn't mention on their own channels otherwise um which makes people aware of it and that's kind of the point because then when the actual testing comes out they then have to kind of revisit those things and say well actually look they do actually perform really well why didn't apple just tell us in the first place now apple's got two videos out of it from someone that doesn't really like apple in the first place they're winning both ways and then at the end you say you're sorry for the endlessly long IK answers but honestly don't apologize i love getting these questions from people it gives me something to talk about especially on the quieter news days thank you so much for your question if you've got a question you want me to answer in a future video hashtag IK answers down in the comments thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>